Hi, I'm Iris Takuna. Uh, I'm president of Analog Digital International. And today we have Ileana Ueta, uh, who has so many titles to her belt. Uh, she's a native New Yorker, uh, she's a mom, uh, she was a police officer, and now turned to be a filmmaker. <laughs> really impressive. How are thank you doing? You. How are you doing <laughs> I'm Elena? doing well, thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background. My uh, family came over from Colombia, South America, uh, with uh, ten of my siblings, um, my mom, and my dad, and uh, my mom had two, my twin brothers, and then myself. So I'm number thirteen in the family, ten boys and three girls, and um, we were raised in the Bushwick section of Brooklyn. Uh, tell me about your first feature, Beneath the Rock, uh, which you both wrote and directed. Sure, I, um, I actually wrote it when I was in Brooklyn College. It was initially called Cherry, and. Um, Subsequently, I changed the title to Beneath the Rock, and uh, it takes place, um, the setting of it is in Bushwick. And um, when I was raised on that block, there was a there's a police alley there. We used to call it an alley, but it's really a lot. There was a myth of this girl named Cherry who died in the police alley. So throughout my life, I always wondered, you know, why she was called Cherry. So, um, you know, I always had her in my mind's eye, so I figured, you know, it would be great for me to write about it. and. Um, and getting that alley, getting that police, because I knew about locations, you know, growing up in, in New York, I knew it was going to be difficult for me to get a location that looked like that, nice. um, that space. And so um, being that this is also my MFA project from the School of Visual Arts, um, I went on a letter writing campaign to the police department and um, to DCPI and the mayor's office um, requesting permission to use that lot. And so um, with Beneath the Rock, another thing that I did was I, um, um, you know, I utilized Cherry. And then when I was a, an officer, there was this block and it was controlled by this drug dealer. And um, he literally controlled the rooftops to the street levels. He was there for a few generations. He was there for wow. a while. And, um, and everybody knew him in the area because he also fed a lot of, you know, wholesale distribution to a lot of the bodegas in the area as well. So. He was extremely popular. So I used that concept for the film, okay. and, I, and I brought it to Bushwick on the block where I was raised. Uh, can you define the moment when you decided to become a filmmaker? You know, when I went to Brooklyn College, I was um, just going to get my BA and go ahead to law school. And, um, and that was the plan that I had at the time. And I took film as an elective, oh. and I fell in love with it. And, you know, I didn't know which route I was going to go, but I started having a passion for, for filmmaking and, and, uh, and the process. Uh, how were you able to make your transition from a cop to a filmmaker? Well, you know, it's funny because I really thought about it and it came to me. And uh, one of the things, when you're a police officer, they give you this very big patrol guide. And uh, it has every single scenario that you could possibly think of in New York City. But they basically have all the same. It's, it's very redundant. And, um, and basically what they all have in common is uh, it's at the discretion of the police officer. Okay. You know, everything's at the discretion of the police officer. So, you know, one thing about filmmaking is that, you know, I did a lot of reading on different directors and how they, you know, their styles of filmmaking. It gave me a foundation of what they were doing. And meanwhile, you know, one of the things I realized is that, you know, they basically don't have a set formula. They, they do what they want to do. Exactly. And to me, that was very similar to being an officer in a sense. You know, it's up to your discretion. So it gave me the fundamentals as far as, you know, obviously, you know, I'm the first one on the set. I'm the last one to leave. I have to make sure everything is, you know, in place. You know, just like a cop, you have to make sure you're, you're wearing everything, you know, and, uh, and that you're prepared. Where are you in this stage in terms of Beneath the Rock? I know you have won many awards. Thank you. Where it is exactly? Um, well, right now, it's, I haven't really joined any more film festivals. I haven't submitted to any more because it's just so costly. Um, I'm pretty blessed I, you know, got notified from the New York Times that they're going to be doing the screening, a Q&A. Oh, congratulations. Um, thank yeah. you. And um, so I'm hoping with that, you know, there's an article that's written, I'm hoping, you know, because what they're going to do is screen it to their staffers. And then I'm inviting some of my actors down there for Q and A. What advice do you have for anyone in, interested in pursuing a film career, coming off another career? 
Um, you know, just learn as much because I'm constantly going to be learning, you know, and um, even on the set, I'm constantly learning. And so I think you just have to be open to it. You know, again, I did a lot of reading and one of the filmmakers that I admire a lot, Clint Eastwood, um, he says he's just, you know, he's very prepared on set and he just, you know, he tries to um, just tackle issues as they come. So it was really comforting to hear that. You know, for somebody that's been in the business all his life, exactly. um, that you always you're always learning something. You always have to be prepared, and um, and and of course, you know, you have to be passionate about it. You have exactly. to love what you do. If you don't, you know, we might as well find something else. So it's always a learning curve. You always learn something new. Mm -hmm. You know, and in your case, I mean, your transition was so good. I mean, you, you already had back of your mind the style of film that you wanted to create, and with the uh, police force and everything. I mean, you have done a phenomenal. I should say the film. For our first feature, you've done a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Really a phenomenal job, I should say. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, what are your plans for the future? Any upcoming projects? I know you mentioned something that you already yeah. have projects in the works. Yeah, I have two projects right now. One, um, I'm in pre-production for both of them. So, um, for Love of the Father um, is um, the next feature that I want to tackle. Um, um, it's about this 17-year-old boy that... Um, um, he's made to go to Hong Kong to save the family business. So over there he starts discovering himself and uh, he comes back to, uh, to claim his legacy. And any uh, last words, I mean... Um, you know, just keep on, you know... I, mean, I shouldn't stress the word last words, there will yeah. be many other words. Oh, thank you. The last word this year. <laughs> yeah. no, thank you. I mean, I'm still in the process of learning myself and I'm looking forward to um, dining 24-7 it's just about being, you know, for me, I just, I'm not going anywhere. I mean, this is what I'm doing, you know, so, um, and just keep on doing it. You know, um, when I did this interview for Channel 11, they, one of my actors said, you know, this is Eliana's story, and she knew the character so well. And I wanted to inject because as much as this is my story, I made it so that, I like to think that I made it so that it's an, it's a, it's an, it's a story for a community and that, you know, by not having a voice, you know, you become, you, you know, you, you get controlled and manipulated. And thank you so much for having me here. It was such no, an honor. No, it was really a pleasure and thank honor. You. And uh, we got thrilled by seeing your film and one thing leading to the other and the person that you are, you know, and we said, you know, why not uh, have the interview? This is, this is the way that we can express and tell and put it out there, you know. Thank and you people so much. would then know it's not only in the film, but what the person expresses and um, uh, says about themselves. And thank you so much because yeah. you guys are taking time out of your schedule to do this, and I appreciate it so much. Yeah, probably we'll send you a bill later on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's my biggest concern. <laughs>